Let's face it, the conversation when it comes to the dating marketplace can be very convoluted, especially when this conversation is centered around sex. And I'm talking about the differences between men and women and how we view sex and also how we can equate sex to respect. So I want to lean into a conversation today based on a question that came in, and then I'd like to discuss it, and then we'll go on to Q&A. So one of, my, one of my audience members, I say audience members, but someone wrote, Jonathan, I have a question or a comment about an observation. I've enjoyed learning from watching your video, series of videos. I agree, women are the gatekeepers of sex, and men are the gatekeepers of commitment. However, I've noticed that there doesn't seem to be any emphasis on encouraging men to take responsibility for the curtailing of the casual sex culture. That is part of life these days. It appears as though the attitude is boys will be boys. So what I think she's addressing is there's a lot of conversations out there in the dating marketplace suggesting that women have sex with men far too easily especially if they've had sex with multiple men. And because of this, men don't have respect for women and therefore they won't choose women who are promiscuous. They call it body count, by the way. Now, a lot of this is for the younger demographics. And at the same time, this can hold true for men as well. I've spoken to men who say that they've had sex with a woman on the first date and they didn't respect that woman. But where is the accountability as this woman is sharing about men? Where's the male accountability? Is it okay for men to be able to, to sleep with women and there's no, um, there's no recourse or repercussion for that? There's no judgment around that? And, and aren't they contributing to the problem when they encourage physical intimacy at an early stage in the dating marketplace? Now, as she, you might have heard, I said that I, this is something I heard is that men or women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of commitment. Well, it's kind of fascinating to me these days that we have sex well before there's any significant commitment between two people. In fact, a lot of times sex can happen before there's any agreement of monogamy or any agreement to exclusivity. In fact, I've witnessed so many women be in a relationship with someone where they're physically intimate with them, and yet they don't know where this relationship stands. Some men will say, I'm taking it slow. Some men will say, let's not put labels on it. Well, if you're going to judge women as being promiscuous and you disrespect them for that, then shouldn't you stand up and say what you stand for? in a relationship? What do you stand for in your life? See, I think men have to be accountable for this as well if this narrative is going to throw women under the bus. And, and certainly, I'm, again, I'm not here to judge when someone has sex or how many partners someone has. But at the same time, I think it's a slippery slope when you judge that behavior when these men are the contributing factors to this behavior. So, I want us to think about this for a second. Men are the gatekeepers of commitment. Isn't it fascinating that it used to be, if you wanted to get laid, you had to get married. That was a narrative that went on for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. That's my speculation. I don't know that as a fact, but that's what I infer from a lot of the historical records, if you will. Television, no, I'm just kidding, movies and such. But, but, when you think about it, there was a commitment made by a man. These days, two people can become physically intimate with each other. They can enjoy some occasional companionship, occasional sex, occasional connection without any real purpose associated with this. See, I want you to understand something. Dating is a vetting process to decide if you want to explore a relationship with someone. Dating is the getting to know you period. OK, to develop a sense of intimacy, to develop a sense of trust with someone. Now, to me, physical intimacy is a rather, um, you know, precious act, if you will. That's right. It's precious because we can become emotionally attached. Well, 
I should say women tend to get more emotionally attached physically, more so than men. Men, biologically speaking, they can spread their seed and not get as attached to someone as a woman can. Also, you know what occurs to me? Speaking of intimacy, we talked about physical intimacy. I'm talking about sex. But what about the act of kissing? You know, it's interesting. Did you ever see the movie Pretty Woman with Julia Roberts and Richard Gere? She plays a sex worker. And one of her rules is she can have sex with a man, provided there's a use of condom. And yet she won't kiss a man because that's too intimate. So when you think about dating today, getting a kiss on the first date is almost a prerequisite these days. It's almost an expectation because if there isn't some sort of connection in that area, two people rarely decide to invest in getting to know one another. And then the pre that's a precursor to having physical sex with someone. It's as if we've diminished physical intimacy to its lowest common denominator, meaning it has no value. And yet all the things that have value is all now predicated on whether or not a man wants to choose you. Now, I think it's fair to say, though, to commit to someone should mean I want to take care of you. I want to take care of you. Whether you're living together or getting married, that's a declaration to say, you know what? I want to take care of you. And it doesn't mean, you know, even in the bad times, it means in the good times too. But more importantly, yes, in the tough times, if you're going through a challenging physical condition or you need some support in your life and you're there to support one another, and it should be a two lane street for both people. It isn't singular to a man nurturing a man and a man not nurturing a woman. And yet for a man, it's typically associated with taking care of someone is financially. And so think about this. We can get physically intimate with someone, but to really reach that level of full commitment is I want to take care of you. How many people are experiencing years and years and years of relationship without ever knowing does this person want to take care of me? Do we want to take care of each other? See, isn't it interesting that we don't put that as on the forefront? And so in doing all the things necessary to determine, is this person worthy of taking care of? And vice versa, knowing that this person will be there through you thick and thin. See, at least with the marriage contract, there's a consequence associated with stopping taking care of with stopping taking care of someone, <laughs> discontinuing taking care of someone. There might be a financial recourse. Now we can just have empty words to say, I care about you, only to disengage from a person because there is no level of commitment. And then I want you to think about this. We just said that kissing and sex is a very intimate act and you bond with another human being through these experiences. There's no consequence for ghosting. There's no consequence for disappearing. There's no consequence for pulling away. See, we are a self-indulgent indulgent society here in the United States. It's all about my needs, my needs, my needs. See, true character is putting the other person's needs at least on par with your own needs. Think about that. That's true character in a relationship. That's truly building trust as you say to another person, your needs matter to me. Your best interests are my best interest. And yet to dating today is a very self-serving experience for both men and women alike. Listen, I once had a woman say, or I, had a, I, I listened to a dating coach that said, if a man doesn't pay for your valet when you go out to dinner with him, don't ever see him again. He doesn't pay the valet. First off, if he treated for dinner, that's a very generous act. See, we boil down generous acts as to expectations and God forbid he doesn't pay for the valet. We should dismiss this person. You know, you might be dismissing a person that will actually be there for you because just because someone has money and is willing to pay for your time doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be there for you when things are tough. I'm really tired of this dating rhetoric today. It's actually pitting men and women against each other. 
And it's unhealthy and worse, it's dangerous because these narratives get bled or they're seeping into our consciousness to the point where both men and women are rather jaded towards the opposite sex. And it's making, making it very difficult to actually surrender. And I mean by surrender, surrender in the, in the getting to know you phase of someone to really determine if they're a healthy person to be with. But then we've got another issue to contend with. The vast majority of people, particularly in mid midlife, are wound. They have childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas that make them rather emotionally dysfunctional, emotionally constipated. Or worse, they're incapable of actually ever committing to someone. This is why I created my private coaching program. By the way, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's links below. What I mean to say is I help you devise, devise, cultivate the questions based on your personality. You need to ask someone to truly evaluate if they're a good fit for you because many human beings have terrible um, discernment. And worse, all of your discernment is based on a lot of superficial things. How tall is he? How good looking is he? How much money does he have? Oh yeah, that's the indicator of relationship success. And worse, believing that chemistry equals relationship success. And even worse on that is many ladies and men, and by the way, everything I'm saying goes for both genders, but so many human beings have codependent, um, not codependent personalities, but codependent infliction, or um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Codependent, um, behavior, let's just say, that cause you to get attached to another human being. And the minute you're attached, it's like a drug. You need this person and yet they're so terrible for you. See, what's, what's missing in today's dating narrative is an understanding that human beings are rather dysfunctional, rather messed up, and they want love both men and women want love. Men aren't bad people. To those, you know, I, I started this conversation by saying men are bad, or at least need to be accountable, but men aren't bad. Women aren't bad. We are just a dysfunctional group of bodies out there trying to experience love with another human being. And yet we don't know how to do it because we don't know how to love ourselves. This is why I, listen, I wrote a book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Work. And why I'm sharing this with you, by the way, my book is basic. It's like planting a seed. But you see, when you plant, and it's only giving you the basics. See, you have to go find out what it really means to you to love yourself. By the way, there's a link below to get a copy of my book and Jonathan recommends books. When you begin to nurture your own soul, you're less resistant. You are, excuse me, you're more resistant to attracting damaged human beings, or let me not say damaged, but unhealed human beings that are going to cause havoc in your life, in your emotional life. Do you realize the number one emotional health issue facing most everybody is I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable? And dating and relationships trigger this like nobody's business. So I want to invite you all to begin a path of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work as a, as a vaccination to the chaos we're, facing with to, we're faced with today. See, men don't lose respect for women because they've slept with a lot of people. That's not a valid reason to lose respect for someone. What's more important is to assess who is this person that I'm connecting with? Is it only a physical relationship? Is it all based on chemistry? Or do, does character matter? Does morals matter? Does kindness, generosity matter? And today we have a very self-serving population that is using one another in the dating realm and how can respect anybody who uses people and how can you respect yourself if you allow yourself to be used? These are all questions to invite. Now, first off, folks, I am no, I am not here to preach as if I am evolved. Okay. I am riddled with flaws. I, I'm I am 
I stick my foot in my mouth frequently. I have found myself in many a situation where I could have done better. I think the most important thing is we own our humanity and to recognize that everybody is doing the best they can. It doesn't make them bad people. I often say most, guys, most men are good guys. They're just bad daters. That's true for women as well. So why did I share all this with you? Because it's time for a, a wake up call for both men and women alike. First and foremost, we are not at odds with one another. We both want to, we both genders want to feel loved. The tricky part is how do we find someone who's capable of love? And more importantly, are we willing to invest in our own self love? Because whether we find a mate or not, what matters most is our own individual journey. And how can we wrap ourselves in a blanket of love? And what I mean to say is not beat ourselves up, not sabotage relationships, not, not crucify ourselves. Because the true miracle in life is to love. That is the truest miracle of all is when we can love ourselves and love others equally. And maybe, just maybe, we find a good partner to take this ride on together because life is better with company. At the same time, it's finding that partner who's willing to hold hands with you through thick and thin and say, I want to take care of you. We're teammates. And so when you say I love you to each other, it means I'm here. You matter. We are important. I've got your back. I'm not going anywhere. And I only want you. I'm here means I'm present. You matter is is your, you matter as much as I matter on this planet. We are important is to recognize that a relationship is a separate entity. I've got your back. That means we're teammates in this relationship. I'm not going anywhere means I'm fully committed. And I only want you means I only want to be physically intimate with you. I don't need to get the next hit on Instagram to feel validation because I have it all within this great partner I have right now. I love you. That's what I think it should mean. So I'm going to end on this note and we'll take questions. Folks, it's not easy out there. It takes work. It takes intentionality. I oftentimes remind you all, radical honesty, laying your cards on the table and pre-qualifying your prospects. And if you need help with that, once again, check out a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. All right. I hope you have found value in what I had to share. Please hit that like button. Please share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification button. All right. I'm going to take questions right now. If you have a